Hi, uh, my name is Vishnu Das, and today I'm going to talk to you about cleansing and rejuvenation in Ayurveda. So traditionally, uh, cleansing and rejuvenation programs are referred to as panchakarma, five cleansing measures. And these five cleansing measures help to eliminate metabolic waste, uneliminated metabolic waste from the system through their natural routes of elimination and also to promote the pacification of the, the dosha or the bodily humors in uh, vata, pitta, and kapha. So this restoration of uh, this elimination of ama, waste products, as well as pacification of dosha are essential in this cleansing. And the cleansing measures that are used uh, are done during the middle phase of an entire cleansing process. So Panchakarma is practiced in three phases, Purva Karma or preparatory measures, which include ingesting medicated clarified butter or ghee into the system uh, in order to help to soften, lubricate the system and to help to ripen in a sense uh, that uh, uneliminated metal metabolic waste and allow it to more easily uh, slough off of the tissues because ama is naturally sticky and holds to the tissues. It helps uh, to loosen that up so we can start to move that ama uh, more effectively. Then once once the Purva Karma practice is uh, completed, you know, and a person has for a period of time taken certain uh, uh, certain gentle laxatives on a regular basis along with a specific type of diet that's promoting to this cleansing process uh, and then eventually adding in that medicated ghee. Uh, from there, we transition to the panchakarma phase where there's more active therapy going on, where we're using practices such as nasya or nasal administration of herbal oils and ghees. Uh, vamana therapy, where we're doing a mesis treatment to allow uh, ama to remove from the upper channels of the body. Uh, we have varechana, which is a more drastic purgative, which helps to flush uh, pitta out through its main site, the small intestine, but it can clear pitta from the stomach as well, although typically that can be removed with vamana as well. Uh, but the uh, pacification of pitta dosha through varechana is a top to bottom laxative, more of a cathartic or drastic type laxatives uh, are given. And then, uh, so we have the uh, nasya, we have the bhamana, we have the varechana, and then we have basti, which is herbal implant enema, uh, where uh, strong herbal decoctions are made and sometimes used just as the herbal decoction, sometimes with oil, or, um, or just, just an oil enema, um, like sesame oil specifically is often used, or combinations of the two are given. And, and these are done over a period of time, okay? So depending on the length of a panchakarma, there's series of bustis or herbal enemas that are given throughout that phase. Then we have rakta mokshana, which is bloodletting. Traditionally, this was done with leeches on certain areas of the body in India, and it still is done that way there. Uh, here, it's more difficult for practitioners to use this method, of course, but, uh, but it's important to know that the old English style of bloodletting, where someone was bled until they were almost dead and so weak that they couldn't even express symptoms, this is not the type of bloodletting that Ayurveda has done for thousands of years. Uh, it's a bastardization of this ancient technique. The traditional bloodletting was just allowing 100, 200 cc's of blood or even less to be drawn from specific areas where toxic blood has, had stagnated. Uh, so uh, what I do uh, for patients that need bloodletting for eczema, psoriasis, acne, and other types of skin ailments, for instance, I'll have them donate blood at the end of a panchakarma at the Red Cross. And this can be uh, followed up by taking herbal rasayanas or nourishing tonic herbs to help the boost the system and allow that fresh blood that's, that, that has been forming in the spleen throughout the whole panchakarma to bathe the body. And I've seen uh, remarkable uh, relief from skin conditions when, when using these practices. Uh, the therapies that are used and before and during the panchakarma phase, like abhyanga, medicated oil massages, piss chill, which is, you know, working medicated oils into the body, uh, pinda swedana, nadi swedana, shiro dara, where we pour the oil over the forehead for a period of time. 
damming certain uh, oils on certain areas of the body, like the heart, Fridbasti or Kattibasti on the low back, um, variety of different types of tarpanas or specific oil treatments on certain areas of the body. All of these therapies are designed to, uh, you know, specifically to induce a, medica a medicinal effect uh, on the body, but also to awaken the pleasure centers to enliven our sense of smell and sensation of touch, and to get those feel-good molecules flowing, helping to reset the central nervous system. So essentially, these are passive therapies where we, we are, as therapists, inducing a state of calm in, on, onto you. Uh, that can be hard for us to achieve on our own, especially when we're experiencing illness. Uh, so Panchakarma, when indicated, can be a phenomenal treatment to to increase and accentuate the healing process. I'm careful to say that Panchakarma is not a cure-all for everybody, and it's not always indicated for everybody. I have people come into the clinic and they say, I want to cleanse, but what they really need is more nourishment, okay? So cleansing isn't always the ticket. What I'd like to encourage is first creating a nice foundation for Panchakarma through daily living, through you know, appropriate diet, lifestyle, good exercise, um, herbal regimes, getting a person on a program, getting them on the path of healing in a stable way. Then once Panchakarma is performed, then you get the most out of it. So I feel like timing is important. And, and uh, having it be in a time of your life where you have the leisure to uh, spend the time uh, doing these practices uh, without feeling the stress of taking time off of work and then having to work twice as hard when you get back in. Uh, so, you know, trying to fit it into your life in a peaceful and harmonious way so you can get the most of it and allow the experience to, to reverberate in your system for a longer period of time. I've seen people uh, do ex spend a lot of time, energy, and finances on the Panchakarma process, but not have the follow through on the back end. And that's when I start to encourage people, first work with me, get to know me, uh, the process, and then we develop a rapport and, uh, and a rhythm with it. And then when Panchakarma is given, it can do wonders. So if you're interested, I have an article on my website, bluelotusayurveda.com, which explains more about the process and the diet that's included and the different types of measures. But each one of these uh, sessions is done individually. And uh, home cleansing is an alternative to people who can't do full panchakarma. I like to say you really can't do full panchakarma at home, but you can mimic the process and follow a more gentle approach to cleansing that can be safe and effective, that doesn't uh, have the same risks of putting you into a healing crisis that might happen if you tried to induce a really deep detoxification without the external therapies being performed on you every day. These therapies, you know, um, sudation lab, uh, steam therapy helps to open and dilate the channels of the body. The massage helps to promote good lymphatic drainage. It helps to move everything in the right direction so your body can efficiently cleanse and deal with a little bit of an, the extra traffic that is happening in your, in a sense, in your t in your uh, tissues and channels when this ama, this waste, is trying to release itself from the body. These therapies help to kind of squeegee it out, you know, just move it out in a more efficient way. If we don't have that, we can, you know, we can do more gentle forms of cleansing with self-massage, daily asana, uh, yoga asana, yoga practice, pranayama. We can still experience a healthy cleansing. I say to people, your body knows how to cleanse. It does it every day. Panchakarma is just moving that process that happens every day along in a more, um, in, in a sense, a, a gentle, forceful manner. Uh, we are trying to encourage that cleansing to happen more, more quickly, more efficiently. And uh, sometimes there's such a uh, disturbance of the three doshas that doing the panchakarma is what's needed to kind of settle the whirlwind of imbalance in the body so then we can start to reset again. 
I hope this has been informative. Again, reach out to us at bluelotusayurveda.com. Feel, feel free to private message me as well if you have any further questions. Namaste.